Hey guys, welcome to Art That Place and Praise. I'm Ginger. In this video, I'll teach you one method you can use to protect your watercolor paintings, and that's by using Dorland's wax medium, which is a matte wax and resin compound. But before I demonstrate how to use this product, let me tell you first what prompted me to do this video. Because you know, I, I made this whimsical watercolor illustration not too long ago. And I normally protect all my watercolor paintings with a spray varnish, like uh, either a Krylon or a Liquitex. But I ran out of supplies and decided to use what I still have at home, uh, which is this Spectrafix fixative. But that was a humongous mistake. I've used Spectrafix before on my oil pastel painting, and this fixative actually destroyed my art. And I don't know why I decided to use it again. Like I didn't learn my lesson before. I gave this fixative a second chance and it destroyed my watercolor painting all over again. So just check out what happened. This is the before and this is the after. So this disaster really made me cry. Like I worked so hard and everything was just wiped out in less than a minute. So I did an extensive research because I had to protect another one of my children's book illustrations and I don't want to take the risk of destroying this painting too. Um, I found that many professionals use Dorland's wax medium uh, as a final top coat to their art. Uh, instead of framing their paintings under glass, they apply this wax which protects the painting as just as well. So um, I want to try it. But before I apply it directly on my painting, I wanted to first test Dorland's compatibility with different art medium. And I want to know if it will work with watercolor or will it also work with other water soluble painting supplies. Um, I want to check because, you know, I tend to work with various media when I paint. I'm not just using watercolor all the time. So in this test, I want to experiment on Dorland's effect on Karen Dashnia color wax pastels, both in its dry and wet form. And I'll test it also on Prismacolor Premier color, colored pencils. Uh, Prisma is wax based, as you know. So I, I wonder if it will react negatively to a wax medium or if they'll complement each other. I don't really know, so we'll see. Prisma color pencils are not really water soluble, but I just want to see if water will affect Dorland's performance on these pencils. I also want to test this product on fine liner pens. Now, Stedler is water soluble and tends to run when sprayed with a fixative, um, not like Sakura Pigma Micron, which is more permanent. So I want to test Dorland's on Stedler instead, both uh, the dry and fully activated in water, uh, those marks that have already been uh, poured water on, soaked in water. Okay, then we'll test the product on watercolor, which is the main reason why I bought Dorland's in the first place. And lastly, I'll test its compatibility with an oil-based medium. So I'm using Mangyo oil pastels for this experiment. I don't have my gouache set at the moment, so I won't be able to test this product on gouache. But many artists attest to uh, Dorland's effectiveness on gouache, so I'll just take their word for it. Uh, it says in the package label that this wax medium is a sealing medium and protective matte top coat for paintings. And for a luster finish, we just have to buff gently the mo uh, when it's already dry. So. Okay, we'll try that and see how well this seals without altering the painting itself. This product can be applied using your finger or a clean cloth, but for the most part, I'll be using a clean cloth because I want to see if there will be a color shift or a color transfer once the wax is applied. Okay, so check this out. Immediately, we can see that the wax medium can smear the dry crayon marks of new color pastels. Uh, but it works pretty well on new color that had already been fully activated with water. With Prismacolor, it doesn't matter if the pencil marks are dry or previously soaked in water. Either way, the wax medium will still spread the pigments. Well, that just tells us that it will be difficult to use Dorland as top coat for any wax-based medium like Caran d'Ache or Prismacolor. 
How about Stedler? As you can see, whether or not the fine liner marks had already been uh, activated with water, the effect is the same. Like applying door lines will not disturb the fine liner drawings, so that's good. With watercolor, none of the samples changed in form, although there's a bit of pigment transfer here. Like take a look at the cloth. There's a hint of yellow and pink on it, but at least the wax medium didn't smear the paint, so that's fine. Uh, this just tells us that Dorlands is compatible with plain watercolor. Now let's try this on Mangyo oil, oil pastels. Uh, you, you can already see that the wax medium will activate oil pastels and spread the pigments around. So it doesn't matter whether the pastels are oil or wax based, you cannot use Dorlands to seal it. Okay. Let's take a last look at the results of our test before I uh, uh, apply the door lens on my actual painting. Now this children's book illustration is not purely made of watercolor, so I'm exercising extreme caution in applying door lens here. Uh, there are Prismacolor colored pencils and Caran Dash pigments in this piece. So I'm really careful not to rub too hard or, or I might risk smearing the paint. Although this painting is more than two weeks old and should be completely dry by now, there might still be excess pigments here that were not fully activated with water before and that might get reactivated by the wax medium. So instead of rubbing the wax, I'm dabbing it and spreading it really gently here. When applying wax, it's also important to occasionally tilt the painting. So you can see from the reflection of the light uh, which portions were already covered and since the wax is transparent it's a bit tricky to know if you're if you're done with the section or not i'm also uh, checking the cloth to see how much color i'm lifting out of the painting i want to make sure the color shift is put to a minimum because i don't want to waste all that hard work i put into this painting Alright, now that I have fully applied the wax on the entire painting, what do you notice? Other brands of wax medium may produce a cloudy appearance on your art, but Dorlands doesn't do that. Uh, the painting is still very sharp and clear. And notice too that Dorlands added a subtle vibrance and depth to the painting. The colors look more enhanced and vivid. Now I have to wait 24 hours for this wax to fully dry. Then afterwards, I'll buff it with a dry cloth and that's supposed to add a bit of sheen to the painting. And I know once the surface is dry, it will feel velvety to the touch. After applying the wax, your painting is supposed to be sealed and I want to test how true that claim is. So let me sprinkle a few drops of water on these paint swatches and Let's observe what happens. Technically, you need to wait for many hours for the wax to be really dry, but I only applied a thin coat for this experiment and it already feels dry to my touch. So check this out. Uh, isn't it cool? The painting becomes impervious to water, so notice the beading here. You can even push the beads of water around and play with it and the paper won't get soaked. Awesome! All right, we are now on day two. I've left this painting to dry for 24 hours and it's now time to buff it to make it shine. So I'm using a circular motion with this cloth and I'm just applying moderate pressure. I used an artboard on this illustration so it's easy to buff but I can imagine that if I painted on a 300 GSM cold press paper, I should be more gentle or I might destroy the paper. At this point, this painting is actually done. So it has sufficient protection against water spills. I'm not sure about UV protection though, but I know for sure that once a wax medium is dry, you can hang your painting even without protective glass. And some artists I know, they mount their watercolor and canvas for a museum-like appeal. Um, the resulting painting already has a bit of gloss. Uh, it's just hard to see it here in the video, but 
but I like a little bit more glossy finish on my painting. So I'm going to apply this Liquitex gloss varnish as a final coat. Now this step is completely optional, but uh, I want to show you that it's possible to apply varnish on a waxy surface if you want extra protection on your art. This varnish can protect against UV damage, which to me is very important because uh, you know, watercolors are not as light fast as acrylic or oil paints. Uh, Liquitex also leaves a more pronounced shine, which I prefer. Now, if none of what I just explained appeals to you, just feel free to skip this step. In applying the liquid varnish, don't be too heavy-handed. Um, if you notice, I only allow the tip of the bristles to touch the painting. It's as light as I can make it. And I also chose a soft bristle brush. Don't use hog bristles because as much as possible, you want the top coat to look smooth without leaving brush marks. Remember that you're adding on top of waxy surface. So you'll notice that the liquid text will resist and pull off occasionally. It's not visible in this video, but there will be a bit of beading on the surface. Just be uh, patient and run the brush over it again and again until the varnish is uh, smoothed over. You may have to reapply the coat several times to achieve full coverage. You'll see that I brush horizontally and then vertically. This is to make sure I'm not leaving any gaps in my application. It's important too that you tilt the painting against the light so you can see which parts are already done and which are still dry and in need of varnish. Okay, that's it friends. I hope this video was informative to you. So the next time you're out of ideas on how to protect your water-soluble works of art, consider this Dorland's wax medium and proceed with a liquid gloss varnish if you want that added protection and shiny finish. All right, this is Ginger again from Art That Place and Praise. I hope you'll subscribe and share the video. See you again next time. Bye.